sort of mystery package. You send me 3D print one. Mm. This is my first bit of fan mail. The mystery package, usually I know what's getting delivered. And this is from this is from Scott from Limerick, Scott Murphy. Now I know Scott. <laughs> Scott works for Mitchelton Scott. Oh, it's a musette bag to the Mitchelton Scott cycling team. Oh, Julie. I do actually wear a cycling cap to work every morning to keep the sun out of my eyes or the rain more commonly in Swansea. So that's going in my bag. Thank you very much, Scott. Right, today's video, we're actually going to be looking at uh, the submandibular ganglion. We've got the force, the full. We've got the Swansea Air Show this weekend as well. Sounds like they're warming up. Submandibular ganglion, right, let's go to the lab. Submandibular ganglion, what we're we talking here, we're talking head and neck, we're talking saliva, salivary glands, um, and we're talking how do the nerves get to the salivary glands, and particularly to salivary glands, all right? We'll recap a few stuff. So salivary glands, uh, you know what they do? They're making saliva. Saliva is very useful because it dissolves the stuff that you're chewing, the food. Um, dissolves the chemicals so you can taste it, starts off digestion, helps you make a bolus of food for swallowing, all that stuff that we've talked about before. And there are four parasympathetic ganglia of the head on either side. Parasympathetic, typically associated with rest and digest functions. Of course, today we're talking digestion, saliva. Um, and I promise we'll do all four. The four parasympathetic ganglia are the otic ganglion, the pterygopalatine ganglion, the ciliary ganglion, and the submandibular ganglion. We've done otic. We've done pterygopalatine. Ciliary ganglion I'm saving because it's the hard one. <laughs> or it's, it's like it's the hard one to describe. Submandibular ganglion you might think of as the easy one. Let me see, it's a bit deep in there. So we should recap a few things, but then we're going to talk about the facial nerve, cranial nerve seven. We're going to talk about corda tympani. We're going to talk about the lingual nerve and describe what that is. And by doing that, we'll also have to talk about the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five. We'll talk about the salivary glands. And we'll talk about parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation to the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland. And by talking about all of that stuff, we will then have talked about the submandibular ganglion, where it is, what runs through it, what its job is, and that sort of thing, all right? So it's the, whole, it's the whole picture we're going for here. There are three pairs of salivary glands. Here, we've got the parotid gland, paraotic. It's next to the ear, otic referring to the ear. So there's the parotid gland. The parotid gland is not our subject today. The sub the parotid gland is not innervated by the facial nerve and it's not innervated by fibres running through the submandibular ganglion. The submandibular ganglion is going to innervate the salivary glands we see down here. So you can see where we are. Here's the tongue, there's the oral cavity. Right, got the mylohyoid muscle under there. The submandibular gland is looping around the posterior free edge of the mylohyoid muscle here. It has a single duct running anteriorly, so it's going to pass, it's going to secrete saliva through the duct and release it into the mouth. We've done the salivary glands elsewhere in detail. Here's the sublingual gland here, sublingual, literally below the tongue, inferior to the tongue. And that's got lots of little ducts. So it's these two glands, two pairs, there's two on either side, two pairs of glands, submandibular and sublingual glands that are going to receive innervation through the submandibular ganglion. And the parasympathetic fibres are going to cause them to produce saliva. Okay? They're also going to get some sympathetic fibres and we'll talk about that as well. Now, that this is useful because you get an idea of where they are in situ. Now this big model is a cutaway of the mandible and there we see the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland here, okay? Um, and that mylohyoid muscle there forming the floor. All right, first things first, the skull 
and the brain. Let's start from here and then work our way to the glands, all right? So if we look at the brain, by the way, the, the reason we've got this funky setup in the room is because we've got a, an exam on Monday and this is part of how we run our exam. Anyway, brain, brain stem. Um, here's the pons and here's the medulla oblongata. Inside the pons, we find the superior salivatory nucleus. So a nucleus inside the central nervous system is a collection of nerve cell bodies, neuron cell bodies. And you know that neurons, they have a cell body and then they have an axon that they extend out. And it's that axon that becomes the, the nerve that's reaching towards the target organ. So the superior salivatory nucleus within the pons, um, that's where the cells that are going to cause salivation of the submandibular and sublingual glands come from and they extend out. So these are parasympathetic neurons, part of the autonomic nervous system, and they're going to extend out from the pons within the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, the weepy, snotty, dribbly nerve of the face because it has so many roles associated with producing secretions, right? Um, now, one thing here maybe to mention is, I think I've mentioned it before, is the idea of nervous intermedius. And we talk about when we look inside the cranial cavity and we look at the facial nerve, we see the facial nerve passing into the internal acoustic meatus here and disappearing into the petrous part of the temporal bone, this rocky ridge here. Inside there are the structures of the middle ear and the inner ear and stuff like that. So that's where the facial nerve is going. When we look at the facial nerve, we often see it's actually almost in two parts. It has a smaller part, the nervous intermedius. And sometimes it's described that those parasympathetic nerve fibers run with the nervous intermedius part of the facial nerve. So if you're reading that and it sounds confusing, that's all that talks about. Otherwise, just consider these parasympathetic fibers to be part of the facial nerves. The facial nerve runs in to the internal ear and the middle ear space, and inside the middle ear there, it gives off a whole bunch of branches, because as I, as I alluded to, it's got a whole bunch of different jobs to do. And those branches find their way out through various um, uh, foramina, cracks, fissures, and that sort of thing in the skull. The nerve branch that we're interested in is the corda tympani. And if you really wanted to know, I don't think you'll ever find this, but the corda tympani works its way out from, from the middle ear, so it branches off the facial nerve in the middle ear, and works its way out of the middle ear bony spaces anteriorly into the face by passing through the petrotympanic fissure. Petrus, remember, of it's in panic anyway. And it gets into the, the infratemporal fossa. So this is the temporal region here, up here. The infratemporal fossa is the, the depression in the space beneath it. So it's in that infratemporal fossa. Anywho, the corda tympani is probably most famous for carrying taste sensation from the tongue back to the brain. And it's carrying taste sensation from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and the corda tympani then is a famous part of the facial nerve. Corda tympani is also carrying parasympathetic neurons from the brain out towards the face. All right, so can we see that on here? So what we can see on here is we can see the corda tympani branching from the facial nerve and then running anteriorly here. This is a deep model of the face. We see lots of structures here. Now the corda tympani is going to run towards the lingual nerve. All right. This here, this is the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five. The trigeminal nerve's main job is to carry sensory innovation back from the face, and it also innovates the muscles of mastication, the muscles you use to bite with. It splits into three branches, and it gives off this mandibular branch here which drops inferiorly down into this same sort of space here. So the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve is going to run anteriorly to the tongue. But the trigeminal nerve, because its job is general sensation, it's going to carry the sensation of you know, touch, pressure, temperature, 
fine touch, pain, that sort of thing from your tongue back to the brain, okay? And it's the lingual nerve that is the branch of the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve that runs towards the tongue. The corda tympani, that nerve joins with the lingual nerve and runs with it because it's going to the same place, it's going to the same direct uh, anterior two thirds of the tongue. Corda tympani is going to do taste, mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve is going to do general sensation from the tongue. Okay? So the lingual nerve then is a mixed nerve. It has fibres from cranial nerve 5 and it has fibres from cranial nerve 7 in there. So in there are our preganglionic parasympathetic neurons that are going to innervate the glands down here. Right, so if I pop this off, that's what we're seeing here. So we're going from, from, from here, we're going deep into the oral cavity, so we're going next to the tongue, you can see the lingual nerve there running anteriorly towards the tongue, we talked about its job, and we can see the duct of the submandibular gland running anteriorly there. So there's the submandibular gland and there's the sublingual gland there, the two salivary glands. Now as the lingual gland is running, the parasympathetic neurons um, leave it and pass to the submandibular ganglion. We got there eventually, there's the submandibular ganglion there. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's um, superior to the most posterior part of the submandibular gland. It's kind of at the posterior edge of the mylohyoid muscle. It's kind of near the duct of the submandibular gland. But the, the submandibular ganglion then is pretty much hanging from the lingual nerve in that spot there. Now what's happening there is what happens to all parasympathetic neurons. A preganglionic parasympathetic neuron has left the central nervous system and has got close to the target organ. You know, something like that usually happens. And then it, it synapses. In the ganglion we've got another collection of nerve cell bodies. If it's outside the central nervous system we call it the, a ganglion, if it's inside the central nervous system we call it a nucleus. Same thing essentially. The preganglionic parasympathetic neuron sends its axon in there and it finds the cell body of a postganglionic parasympathetic neuron and it's going to send its action potential from the first nerve to the second nerve and then that from the from the submandibular ganglion, the postganglionic parasympathetic neurons are going to run to the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands and cause them to secrete saliva. The, um, the cells in there are producing saliva and they're actually surrounded by um, myoacinar cells. So cells like, which have got muscle fibres in them, myofibrils in them, which can actually squeeze. So the parasympathetic innovation can actually cause um, the squeezing out of saliva from the glands in the oral cavity in response to food, which is why you drool when you smell nice foody smells. Um, and that is the submandibular ganglia, and that is where it is, and that is how the nerves get to it, and hopefully you have a good understanding of what the lingual nerve is now. It's a mixed nerve, all right? Okay, good job, well done. Ah, uh, now, we haven't actually got the ganglion on here, but you know it would be around here somewhere. Um, so the other thing to mention is that these parasympathetic ganglia of the head, this is where parasympathetic neurons, they synapse. They, one neuron meets another neuron. There is a meeting of neurons there. But it's important to be aware that in these ganglia, other neurons, other nerve fibres, run straight through that ganglion as well, but they don't synapse in that ganglion. This is wiring, this is cabling, right? This is just, this is just the route these nerve fibres are going to take to get to the same target structure, the same organ. So, the Salivary glands also receive sympathetic innervation. Now the sympathetic innervation to these guys comes from the same place that the sympathetic innervation um, comes from all stuff, for, for all stuff. Um, 
the sympathetic neurons come out of the spinal cord within the thoracic levels and run out to the sympathetic trunk and, and what have you. We've talked about that before. And the sympathetic ganglia run up into the neck um, and sympathetic neurons tend to follow arteries to get to target structures. Um, so what we're talking about here is that the, the blood supply to the salivary glands is through arteries and arterioles, right? Arteries and arterioles have got thicker walls because they've got smooth muscle in their walls. The sympathetic innervation to that smooth muscle can cause vasoconstriction, so it can limit blood flow to the salivary glands. So by controlling the blood flow to the salivary glands, you're also controlling the activity of the salivary glands. So you get an idea of how parasympathetic and sympathetic are working in opposition. So the sympathetic nerves will follow the common carotid artery up the neck to the external carotid artery to the facial artery and that will take them roughly to the right region and then the sympathetic neurons will run through the submandibular ganglion without synapse and they've already synapsed that was ages ago and that's how they get to the salivary glands okay so that's the autonomic innovation to the salivary glands submandibular and sublingual while we were there looking at it anyway all right and Robert, your father's brother. Right, there we go, that's it. Um, I better check everything's ready for the exam on Monday and I'll see you guys next week for, for another something.